Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains. In this layout design, we're going to look at a tabletop in scale layout built with Kato Unitrack and with the Kato Unitram system. We'll have a look at that and I'll briefly uh, point out how you can operate this layout. Someone roll that intro so we can get started. Here we go. Let's have a look at the general requirements for the layout. It's freelance design, set in the 1980s onwards in the northeast side of the US. I'm running CSX and North Fork Southern locomotives, and scale Kato Unitrack, I already mentioned that. And initial idea was a minimum radius of 11 inch and turnouts number six. There's a lot to talk about on that topic uh, later. So on the operation side, uh, it's meant to be operated by one person, a double track mainline, uh, with continuous running and then perhaps some industries on the side where you can do some switching in the meantime. It has some requirements for some several large industries being an intermodal slash car area, a yard uh, also acting as staging, and then a large industry which would be a paper industry, small terminal, and then a unitram a loop. Everyone who doesn't know I will show that later what that is. It is to be built on an existing tabletop and he doesn't mind to use grades if needed otherwise uh, don't use them. The client says he watches my videos and really likes my approach. So despite this is a tabletop and normally I do more prototypical switching type of layouts, I just thought, okay, let me just continue with how I would approach this and see what comes out a little bit as well. So tabletops are a whole different ball game to more prototypical type of layouts and where you try to have as much linear trackage as you can to, 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 yeah, to have your switching and your prototype scene. But on a tabletop, that's just not possible because you don't have that linear uh, space. So I sent him uh, two things. First, the bottom schematic. This is a very high over schematic of a type of layout we could achieve on a tabletop. It's basically uh, two uh, loops with some double track mainline in it probably, and the inner loop uh, folds over on itself. And then there will be uh, several crossover locations from the inner loop to the outer loop. This schematic gives a insane amount of options when uh, operating and using it, which you'll see later. And then on the top, uh, I just put in everything he requested uh, on a single line diagram. So an intermodal uh, yard somewhere here, and then some industries uh, with some, some switching, a passenger station, if that would fit, was on the list, and then a yard with some switching. So not a lot of items, but then again, there's also not a lot of space. So Unitram. Unitram is a system type of product where you can have a tram line in end scale and a whole city scene. If you see it, it looks absolutely amazing. And it's basically built up out of these tiles. And these tiles compile of straight sections and curve or a turnout. This is something that needs to go onto the layout as well. This is the Unitram system. I said the client uh, has already had a tabletop. So here you see it, the uh, wood frame is underneath and do note that the uh, the pink foam is a bit larger than the tabletop and if necessary the track can be on that uh, space as well but you prefer to just have it on the, the confinements of the tabletop. So that was a lot of build up let's finally go to the design here you see the tabletop you see it in brown that's the wood uh, section and then in pink is where the foam extrudes over the tabletop so we can use the space if we have to. Now before we go on to the design this is one more intermittent piece of information we need to discuss. The Kato Unitrack has these elevated curve sections, which are just amazing, as you see on the imagery here, but they only come in double track sections. So if we then look at the geometry, they only have a few sizes of this double track section. So ideally we want to use it, but let's see if we can. Then of course they have a little array of single track, as you see here as well. So let's look at the design now. This is just a very first rough onset just to see if the initial diagram that we drew right here would actually fit in the space. And lucky me, it does, so that uh, always helps. So what we see is it is an outer loop. Um, it just goes all the way around the layout. There's no crossovers yet, so it's really separated. They managed to put some staging here in the north. This uh, later turned out not to be necessary. Um, and then there's an the inner loop here, and as you see, the inner loop crosses itself right here with the crossover. The idea of this design is just to see if everything would fit. So let's look at the constraints. The constraints would be, for example, here with the crossover. You wanted to have this as far to the right as possible, so this stretch can be the longest as possible. And then we dive into the curve. Now, these, talking about these curves, the initial idea, we get cheat sheet, 
So you see a small chart with inches right here and centimeters right there. So I said initially the uh, idea was to have 12 and 13 inch uh, for the inside and outside curves. Now looking at some uh, rail cars that seemed quite small. I mean, ideally you really want to go all the way to 17, 18, but uh, that's just not going to fit. So the next best thing is this 16 and 15 inch. And why do I say the next best thing? Because as you remember, the Kato Unitrack has these uh, super elevated curves, but they only come in three different sizes. So size one would be uh, 18 and 17 inch here in orange. Size two would be 16 and 15 inch here in light blue. And size three is uh, far smaller, the 12 and 11 inch here in green. So we first wanted a this, so that would not be super elevated at all. Then we went, I thought, well, maybe we could fit that super elevated in, and then we go to this size. So I actually made a whole new design with this uh, 16 and 15 inch radius. And here it is, just to see if it would work. You see, it's far, far bigger. You see there's the double track sections. This just looks a lot less balanced. There's almost no straight areas. You're just diving in from one curve straight to the next. And there's a small straight section where maybe you can put a few turnouts, diving into the next curve. I don't think that's the way to go. And also this longer stretch uh, section right here, it's just not long enough to have a, a double-ended uh, intermodal yard because in the end we wanted a, um, a double-ended intermodal yard and a stop-ended yard for us, various reasons. Going back to my cheat sheet, then we came up with variant number three. Why don't we split the difference? And then we'll use uh, 15 and 13 inch uh, radius uh, curves. But then this will not be the super elevated. This will just be a sectional track. And that actually turned out, if you see, quite well. It's a nice balance between getting the maximum radius uh, in there, but also having some straight sections to, to do something with uh, with longer trains and that it will look nice. So this is the initial, well, initial final plan. It says version three. But between version 2 and version 3, there were many, many versions with different uh, sizes of yards and configurations. So this is what we came up with so far. So again, it's the, the same double loop. And on the outer loop here, we have the yard. I thought it would be nice to have the yard on the outer loop and the industries on the inner loop. So that would give you a reason to also go from one loop to the other. So we have a one, two, three tracks right here. And then there's uh, the fourth one goes around and enters in this uh, fueling and the sanding station, small terminal and small rib track here at the end. I chose to do it uh, in this fashion so we don't use this pink space. This will actually be cut out. So your reach depth into the layout, especially where you want to uh, possibly do some switching here, is still somewhat manageable. You know, the table on, on the top and the right side is covered by a wall, but the table is on wheels. So if you have a derailment or if you want to change something in the scenery, you can just wheel it away. So then on the inner loop, we will have a uh, intermodal yard. Uh, this is a, uh, I said, a through uh, version with two tracks. And then continuing on the inner loop, you may have a trailing uh, point and a, a leading point here for different industries just to mix it up. We have a oil refinery. That's what the, uh, the client wanted on one end. And on the other end, we have plenty of space to have one nice uh, big scened uh, paper company. I actually used two Walter kits right here just to give it some space. The exact track arrangement obviously will be done once he has the kits and he can mock it up a little bit. And this might be one a way to do it. But now you're thinking, where is the Unitram system? Well, in my mind, this would be um, positioned somewhere up here, either a, a loop or some bigger complicated loop um, on a second deck where you will have a, a city scene. So after sending this to the client, he was quite uh, positive about this uh, layout, had a few small remarks, and also was questioning if it would be worthwhile to, to have an incline section and to go up to a second deck. So I was thinking about that, how can we incorporate that? This is already going to be a second deck section over here with the Unitram, the way we can do something with a branch line. So I came up with two different versions. The first one would be a route B. So what would happen here is you actually have a turnout just right here and the track would go up 4% grade and then loop around and you'll have a very nice trestle scene or girder bridge scene where you come to a small um, section with a passenger station and perhaps a small industry right there. I just mocked in the, just very quickly, this is greenery to give you an idea of what track would be visible and what track would be not visible. And the second version would be the initial layout but with a unitram here on top. It's drawn in very large. It's going to be much, much smaller in the end. 
but if you uh, let the tram come forward enough, you can perhaps have a big passenger station. This will be a two deck passenger station with the top deck for the Unitram and then the bottom deck here with just the, uh, let's say the Amtrak side of the passenger station. So after sending this to the client, he chose for uh, root option A because he really wanted the Unitram system in there. So working that out a bit, we jump straight into uh, this design where I drew in a lot of the scenery. There's some small changes to the track and, and the pieces used, but the overall uh, idea is still there. So let's just go through it a little bit. One note I've got to mention is that the paper industry is under actually under an angle and did that deliberately. So from, from the operating position, you can look into the paper industry slightly, which will be helpful when, when switching this uh, this industry. Now there's always a lot of options when going through a design. This is scenery is how I would do it, how I envision it. But I gave him a lot of options and these S's are basically options. Um, so S6 here, I added this track right here. And this is a very interesting piece of track because it goes from the inner loop to the outer loop. And this can be either a passenger station or this could be a interchange track. So you can switch cars from the inner loop to the outer loop. The question was with S6, what are we going to do there? Is it going to be a small station or do we want to tie this in with the city scene? So basically making S6, X, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4, one giant city. Same for S7, this could be a more city scene as well, all the way to S8 if you would want it. Um, but the note of caution, if you would make all of this city, then it's basically going to be a giant build. It's going to take you quite a long time to, to get this all uh, finished. So a good step for, for anyone would be is just fill it in with greenery. You can do that quite quick. And if you do want to make a city scene, you just make it uh, over time, just slowly expand it and take the greenery away and make it a city scene. So otherwise this is going to be unlandscaped for a long, long time, probably. So there were a few remarks that he had. Uh, S7, he wanted a bit more city over there, perhaps a more modern uh, city. And the Unitram loop is, is quite big now. This could be a, a bit smaller if we can squeeze that in there somehow. So taking that into account, this is the final layout when it comes to the scenery. So you see I made the, the Unitram loop a little bit smaller. There's still a trestle right here. Um, I put in a, a turnout for the Unitram here and then it goes into this uh, terminal building where you can store one or two of the trams. The client really liked bridges. So here I added a river because paper industries are normally next to a river because they require a lot of water. And we have one, two, three, four, five bridges. So I hope that quenches the uh, craving for bridges. And I add another one here on the, the south end as well, next to the oil refinery. The river cannot really go anywhere here, naturally speaking. I just made it a part of a dried up riverbed um, where the bridge still crosses over. If we look at the town slash city itself, uh, I built it up in layers. Um, the whole layout is built in layers. You want to start with low buildings in the front, so that would be a yard. Then here this nice open valley greenery leading into this a uh, trestle or, or a girder bridge where you can look through. And then the start of the city would be a bit more green with residential areas. It would be some kind of gazebo or city hall with some greenery. In the front you would want to have one or two story buildings slowly leading up to three stories and four stories in the back. And he requested a very modern, I think, UPS building. That's something you can do on this side of the city together with some other more modern buildings. And also the Unitram system is, is quite modern, so that would fly and tie in nicely here with the modern buildings. Here's the intermodal yard with two tracks. Here I made it in the end, it's just a uh, interchange track. I think that will give the most operational uh, yeah, diversity. Here's one industry, this is still to be determined. And then if I turn off the scenery and the top layer, this is the entire track plan. And now let's go to the operations. So do note there's one, two, and three crossovers where you can go from the inner track to the outer track. Uh, and of course there is this interchange track, but we'll just call that interchange for now. So there's one, two, three crossovers. On to the operations. So now on to operations. I made this extra section just for everyone and also myself to get their head around what it means to have this uh, double loop where the inside loop is folded upon itself. So as you remember, this is the first initial design I sent to the client. Now we've progressed a bit, so trying to keep it in a schematic sense, um, this is what we have right now. So we have basically the, the, the two loops, and then there's a yard plus terminal here, there's intermodal here, interchange there, paper industry with a uh, trailing edge and a leading edge here for the other industry, oil industry. So most important as well 
as I said, four of these one, two, three crossovers. So the first thing you can do is ignore all the crossovers and set them all in a straight direction. So then this is basically what you're going to get. Two totally separated lines, except for the inch change track, where you can send cars from one track to the other. So if you draw this in a schematic, now this is where it gets interesting, we have the black line here, so there's a yard and a terminal right there, and this is where the interchange track uh, dives off. And this will be the blue line. So you come on here, we have the paper industry, we have the other industry, and here would be the intermodal yard. So this is one way how you could use this layout. Now if we continue, the other way would be to have this uh, crossover here on the right to be set to crossover permanently. So what would happen now, you would basically generate one giant loop, nothing more, nothing less. So then the uh, single line diagram, as you see on top, would look like this. So do note the interchange is on it twice because you have it twice on your one single line. And note as well, coming from the yard, the paper is trailing and the various industry is leading. That's where the previous design, the various industry is trailing and the paper is leading. Uh -huh. So that's a bit of a twist right there. Now, what you can do when you have this setup is, for example, if you have a large uh, train going in or out of the yard and you want to take your time, is use the other two crossovers that we have left and set them as a, uh, as a divergence uh, track. So you basically create a siding right here. So in blue, so you see it in the top as well. We, we've basically created a siding that uh, passes the uh, yard right there. So what you probably want to do then is uh, on the other crossover, set it to, to straight. I illustrated here in blue. So otherwise your train might run into a, um, a closed turnout. And then if we set the uh, crossovers here on the left in the other direction, you can get uh, this variant. So basically you have a siding uh, to skip the intermodal yard. So if we look on the top again, here in green, this is you see, here you see the siding that is created. So that's an interesting mind twist right there. If, if you have one continuous line and then two pieces of track, create a siding where on the line diagram or in a totally different location. So that's an interesting second way to operate. Now if you want to get your hands on this uh, track design, please look at my Patreon page. There you can find all of them if you subscribe and you can send me an email or contact me as well if you want your own layout design or help with operations on your existing layout or something of that nature. Thank you all for watching. That's all for today. Bye bye.